Hey guys, in this video I uh, go over the process of uh, making my growler street legal. Um, and I would assume it works for most military vehicles in general. Um, some of the basic requirements and uh, some of the problems or pitfalls that you can run into. Alright, let's go at it. So unfortunately, this does vary from state to state, but there are some basic requirements that most states do agree on. California is probably one of the hardest states that you can try and get something street legal in. From my understanding, I mean, it, it's next to impossible, but I'm not in California, so uh, it wasn't that bad of a process for me. Um, so some lists of must-haves. Uh, you must have mirrors, number one. Uh, and I believe at a minimum they want you to have a driver's side mirror and a rear view mirror. And then some states um, might require that you have also a passenger side mirror depending on the visibility of the rear view mirror. Um, you, you need seat belts that are functioning. Um, also a regular round steering wheel that is at least 13 inches in diameter. Uh, and from my understanding, they won't allow other styles such as a uh, butterfly wheel or a joystick type of steering wheel. Um, you need a functioning horn and from my understanding, it also needs to be audible at least 200 feet. Now, I don't know how often uh, they check that, but that's what I found um, when I was trying to get ready myself to have the growler uh, get plated. Uh, you need a hood, bumper, and fender, functioning brakes, and an emergency brake. Uh, they also want for you to have headlights, brake lights, turn signals, um, tail lights, and reflectors, both rear and side reflectors. Um, you do need a certain amount of ground clearance. I could not find an exact number for that, but essentially they don't want you to be too low to the ground or too high off the ground, uh, which shouldn't be a problem for most military vehicles. Um, you need a speedometer. You need doors that open or at least a space where a door should be. Uh, so with the growler or with a Humvee, uh, you should be fine if, even if you don't have doors on it. Um, you need a windshield and windshield wipers. Um, you also need a place for your license plate to go. So you need a license plate holder and it needs to be lighted. Uh, and I believe it needs to be able to be seen from 100 feet. Um, some states also require that you have a front plate. I don't think that has to be lighted, but um, that's one of the biggest things you'll run into with a military vehicle. They don't have plates, you know, and a lot of times they just have spray paint that indicates what it is or, you know, jack points or lift points and uh, tie down points. Uh, so that, you know, there's a few ways you can do it. Some places might require that you have one that is bolted on to the frame itself. Um, and you can get hideaway plates that you can kind of tuck it in after um, if you're say at a parade and you want it to look more um, original um, and they also sell magnetic plates and I think it varies on whether they'll let you have something like that um, but it's worth a shot and uh, the nice thing about a magnetic plate is it's easy to adjust it you're not modifying the vehicle you're not drilling holes in the vehicle which gives you more chance for rust and things like that so some of the potential problem areas or pitfalls um, a lot of times it seems like the bmv they may not have your make and model on file um, especially for newly offered vehicles like the growler uh, you know if you've had somebody who has already um, titled a vehicle 
in your state sometimes they do have that um, but uh, when I did it they needed to call you know the main office and and actually input that information input that make and model and um, that way they could actually title it for me um, or um, register it um, also uh, when purchasing if possible uh, if they give the option, purchase the full title document. Uh, a lot of times you can order either a bill of sale or a SF-97, I believe it is, or you can actually order a full title. Uh, it typically costs more, but it's not significantly more. I think it costs me about $150 as opposed to $50 or $100 for the other documents, uh, but I think it saved me a ton of time and headache. Oftentimes, they'll also want your vehicle to be inspected by a police officer. Um, that way they can check to ensure that parts aren't stolen. Uh, they'll look for a VIN or a serial number. Um, and they may list it as a VIN not present. In that case, you might have to apply for a VIN from the state. Um, typically, the title will come with a VIN if you do get the full title work. Um, but it may not be on the vehicle itself. So uh, you may have to have that installed and you could buy um, engraved plates uh, that can be installed on the vehicle. You just either have to do it yourself or find a place that'll install it. Um, also, it's important that if you do that, a lot of times they want you to have this um, certain type of rivet that has a pattern on it um, that shows that it came with the vehicle. I don't know much about that. Uh, I didn't have to do that per se. Um, so uh, I would look more into that if you were going to go that hey, route. Hey, hey, hey. And the biggest thing is just be patient and uh, you know try and work with the BMV and and see if they can get the information put in if it's not already in the system. Uh, you know, cross your fingers and, and hope for the best. And, and, you know, there's a lot of good people that work for those organizations. So, uh, you know, just try your best to keep a positive attitude and, and see if they'll work with you on it. All right. Good luck, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.